watching Victory Life Today with Al and Angie Burke. Welcome to Victory Life Today. I'm Al Burke. And I'm Angie Burke. We're excited that you decided to join us today. You know, Al, I remember a long time ago, the Lord told me that there's two things that the people, my people, live in. He said, actually, live in. And they live in the regrets of the past and the what-ifs of the future. Yeah. And they're they're either always thinking about what, what happened in the past, and it's usually not good, Yeah. or, or they're thinking about... Uh, what could happen in the future, which would also not be good. Right, the what-ifs. Yeah, the what-ifs of the future. You know, the regrets of the past. Yeah, in my own life, I spent a lot of time in the regrets of the past. And you're thinking about, oh, no, all these dumb things I did, you know. And one day the Lord said to me, he said, you know, where, does, where do you think all this thinking comes from? You know, and I was like, I don't know. And he said, the devil's throwing this is constantly bombarding mm-hmm. you with all of the bad stuff you good that you did. Did you ever think how you never really think about all the good things you did? I know, really. And the Lord said, "Where do you think that's coming from?" And yeah. I was like, "Oh my God, the devil's just that's... constantly pounding on us." Yeah. So that's part of that regret thing, you know. Yeah. If the devil didn't bring it up, we'd probably forget. <laughs> oh, that's right. Well, today we're going to talk about fear and your what thoughts, we... fear and our your thoughts, thought life. and how how much they're connected. Yeah. Wow. So but, so where does the fear come from? It's coming from your mind. That's right. Okay, it was just like I was saying just before, you know, the devil's flooding your mind with all of these things. And it's usually because of things that we've seen or heard or witnessed firsthand, and the devil's always reminding of this. They even right. imagine things, you know? Well, look at look at just the news on TV. Oh, my and, Lord. And you watch the news, and that goes right into your thinking, and it creates a fear, like, what if this happens to me? Or what if, you know? Like, you're watching that. something that happened on TV, right. and you're like, oh, maybe that's going to happen to me tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh no, oh no. And that's wow. all that what ifs and what ifs and fear and what ifs and fear. It's just. Yeah. It's, I remember years ago, you know, how kids, they're grown now, but when they were in elementary school, they used to go recess, you yeah. know? Oh, they used to love it. And uh, they used to just uh, look forward to that recess every single day, you know? And what would they would do is they would go out onto the playground and they would pretend yeah. to be someone else. Uh, you know, Al, maybe yeah. a princess or a pirate whatever. or uh, cowboys and Indians or whatever. Mm. And they would just picture themselves all dressed up like that, right? And they would go around and run after each other and everything, and they were totally different people. It was all made up. And then after recess, they would go back into the classroom, and they were... Why are the boys always shooting each other? (laughs) And the girls are always a princess. There's something going on here I must be missing. So go ahead, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. But they were so happy with what they accomplished, Al. They were on the playground, and they were walking in, and they were really feeling good. I mean, I've seen it. I've been helpers at schools and everything. And and they get back in, and they look forward to the next day where they can pretend again. Well, you know, we have to look at it like this. The devil uses our mind as a playground. Our mind is the devil's playground. And what he does is he gets in there and he brings unrealistic things. He brings fake things. This is really important. He he brings made up things in our minds and it's our choice whether we're going to believe that or or, or not. You know, and yeah. remember, he's not bringing anything good. He's right. not bringing anything pleasant. It's made up things in our mind and it's all fear. Right, and he onslaughts us with with lies and fear and worry and guilt and emotion and shame. Uh, you know, it's 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 like this. You you get a pain in your head. Okay, what do you think about? Oh my gosh, I got a brain tumor. Right away, the devil wants you to focus on that lie. And he's having a field day in your mind. And then when the day is over, he goes, okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Just like the kids looking forward to another opportunity to create fear in you. So it's coming from the enemy. Well, you know, I've talked about this, how the devil just beats on you all day long. and And then you're just a wreck. 
at the end of the day, yeah. right? And then the devil That's goes, right. oh man, this is awesome. This is my best day ever. Because he's doing his best to, re- you know, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. So everything from him is coming in that kind of realm. And you have to understand that if you don't understand this one point about Christianity, that you are in a knockdown, drag out war, take no prisoners, that has to, you have to have, to have that understanding. Um, so you can understand where all of this is coming from. Yeah. Otherwise, it's like, well, is God doing this? Oh. You know, they if they take the devil out of the picture, it's everything is God. Well, then who's doing this to me? It must be God. And it's incorrect. The devil's bringing all of these thoughts of fear. And, and, and you know, uh, sometimes we just need to check our emotions and yes. say, you know, where, where are, and if we're experiencing really the bad emotions of fear and all of this, we're not thinking according to God's word. That's We're not right. aligning ourselves with the word of God. That's right. You know, when we, th- when we, when we see something positive mm-hmm. or we, we find a good TV show and, we, and it's a positive reinforcing show or, or you're outside and you're looking at a beautiful lake and that brings pleasure to you. You know, what I really like is when I go outside and I smell the freshly cut green grass, like somebody is mowing the grass, you know, and I just love that. But then there are other things that, that are negative that that are set before us. And that just creates such a horrible response in our physical bodies, you know, and in our minds and everything. And it's just such a total. And you know what, Al? We were not made for that. We were made for the positive. We were created, created for the positive. So that's why we're such a mess when anything negative. We were created in love for love. That's right. And we need to operate in love. And when we're, this world is just so, it's getting worse all the time. You're being bombarded with all of this negative thing. Mm -hmm. And that's why we go down into this depression and all of these kind of things. You know, one of the things that we, you know, they were talking about, like climate change, just the earth is changing. Well, the earth was conceived in love. And as wow. man gets more and more wicked and there's more wickedness on the earth, there's going to be more earthquakes and storms because... Oh, that is so good. That it, it is can't, so it, good. It's shaking. It's reeling under this weight oh of all of this goodness. sin and, and all of this. So, so there's everybody's answer. There's everybody's answer. Actually, <laughs> so. if you look at the whole of what goes on in the world, in, the, in, the, in a lot of the Christian, but the way of the world, everything that's bad that's happened is either because of one of two things or both. Fear or pride. You just start looking through the history books of what happened. It was all about fear or pride It's in our lives. And so we don't, God calling us not to be prideful and not to be fearful. He's already managed all of this. You know, I had some, uh, you know, the Lord's been talking to me about being positive lately, more positive than usual. Thank you, Jesus. So... (laughs) Uh, he's been, and I said, Lord, I've got these things going on in my life that are just yeah. so bad. How am I supposed to think positive? Let's get in reality. And the Lord said this to me. He said, I want you to look over it and look to what I'm going to do at the end. Yeah, you're going to have to endure some things and go through this, maintain your faith. But just in order to stay positive, look at the good things I'm going to do and what I'm going to bring. But here's what he did. He told you what to do. Yes. There is something if you are right. if your thoughts are toxic and, and negative to, to the point of uh, being toxic and unhealthy, there is something that you can do and there is something that you must do. And we're going to show you some of the things today. Right. Well, you know, years ago, I broke my hip. Remember, I fell yes. off the ladder and broke yes. my hip. And uh, well, they had said, you know, we're going to do surgery and rehab and all of that, which we didn't do any of that. Um <laughs> Praise God. Which is so typical of me. But, you know, they said, oh, and they said, you know, you may not ever walk correctly and all of this. And then they said, you know, just one thing we want you to know. Oh, talk about fear and the what ifs. Yeah. A lot of people that this happens to them a year or two later, they get into severe arthritic, arthritic Arthritic pain. Arthritic pain, yeah. And I was just sitting there going, the devil. I always say this. Just remember this. The devil loves a good injury. It gives him an excuse to stay. That's and we use good. it all the time. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. so I had I had 
you know, I fell, I broke my hip. It was a long story. They said it would be a year before I'd be working, walking, but I was walking in five yeah. weeks. But it healed naturally. It he- we're made to heal naturally. Exactly. If you give your body exactly. a half a shot, it'll heal naturally. Exactly. And 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 your hip was, your, your pelvis was shattered. Mm-hmm. I saw the x-ray. Yeah. And that, all of that, think about the miracle. All of that just came back together yeah. without a day of rehab, nothing. Nothing. No surgery, nothing. And it all came back and healed. But that heals naturally. But fear, does that? Fear has to be fought. You know, fear is going to... Fear is not going to go away. Fear is... You're not going to get healed of fear like our physical bodies naturally heal. Uh, You're going to have to fight fear. That's the difference. You will have to fight fear. You know, a friend of mine, his, (laughs) his daughter was like five years old and she fell and a car ran over her. Just oh ran over, goodness. you know, just like, like, just barely moving, went over her. And instead of going to fear, he pulled her out and he started praying and believing. And she just got up and said, I'm fine. And it's like, it's imp- you can't be fine. Yeah. You just got run over by a car. You're five wow. years old. Wow. She said, I'm fine. It's a miracle That's from God. Right. Why? He wouldn't go in fear. That's he right. pulled her out. Instead of going, oh, no, no, it's over. This is. He wouldn't go there. He just That's pulled right. her out from under the car, and he started praying for her and laying hands on her. And she just walked away. I mean, everyone's like. And that's what you're supposed to do when fear. I'm sure he felt that fear. Oh, my right God. Right that second. And what do you do when fear raises its ugly head? You you take it right on at the purpose. onset. Absolutely. Fight because it. fear is an emotion. And it's telling us, that emotion that we feel, it's telling us that our thoughts are not right. And then once we recognize the thought, then we can do something about it. You know, we need to make sure that all of our thoughts line up with the way we were made. Okay? We were made in love. We were conceived in love. This is... This is very, this is done on purpose. This is not something that's going to fall out of the sky. You have to make sure you're always thinking about the positive. Even if you're thinking of someone that maybe you had an altercation with or something. The minute you think about that person, you're going to feel a negative thought. But you need to switch it immediately to a positive thought. And you can do that because God's telling you you can do that. Think on good things. He's telling us we could do that. You know, the bad thinking, literally will create like toxins in your body and it'll you know your brain produces vitamins and minerals it's like a factory and all of that negative negative thinking causes the brain to stop wow and that's what happens as you get older it's very common and now you're taking vitamins because your brain stopped making manufacturing whatever yeah almost everything the brain will manufacture so Um, so what we're trying to say here is positive thoughts are very powerful but also negative thoughts are very powerful. And that's not a good thing. <laughs> no, that's not a good thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, the, it, the negative can literally create the thing you're talk, thinking about. Absolutely. You know, I've had people that are they're in absolute fear of a sickness. Most people are in absolute fear of cancer. You talk to them and, the, you know, the guy's 25 years old. Oh, I'm worried about cancer. I'm like, you're 25 years old. This yeah. isn't going to And you know what? That fear will literally bring it into their life yes. over time. Yes. But guess what? The opposite, no fear, thinking on the good things that God has will bring that into your life. Absolutely. So uh, one of the things we can do about thinking is start to speak out the positive. Right. But we have to make sure, Al, if we're afraid of something, we don't speak that out. No, don't speak out. You know, fear. you have to just, even if you have to just sit Zip up and just don't say a word is better than speaking out that fear. You know, like you get a, a bad doctor's report or something and you get right on the phone and you start speaking how scared. I'm so scared. Oh. Please help me. That is creating havoc. And that then they're on not, the internet looking at every possible thing of their disease. That's not smart either. That's no. not smart. You go to your heavenly father and he will speak to you. He will tell you what's up. He will show you the things to do because he loves you. This is an easy way rather than being all stressed out and everything. Yeah. And you know, those bad reports from the doctor, I had this medical doctor told me, he said, look Al, <laughs> the best tests we have are only 50% accurate. Oh, man. So when you get a bad test back, if you get a bad test back, you got to say, no, 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 this is most likely wrong. Wow. Start wow. thinking the positive and bring that positive thinking. You know, there was a man who had cancer 
and he was in the hospital and he said, I want you to bring in every kind of comedy movie you can find. And this was a long time ago. And they had the Three Stooges playing all day long. And after like a week of that, he walked out of the hospital. Camp. Isn't that he laughed laughter is way, good medicine? That's what the scripture he says. He laughed his way healthy. Amen. Well, you know, let's go to a scripture here that shows us what we're supposed to do. In Philippians 4, 8, it says, Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. God's saying, look, even if you see a beautiful uh, uh, flower in your backyard and that's beautiful to you, then just just enjoy that. Just think on that. Just think of how much joy it brought you. You know, we have control over our thoughts. Yeah, God, he's literally telling us how to think. I mean, That's really, exactly he's, right. you know, how hard is That's this, exactly. you know? It, it's like the question is, you know, how do you think, you know, A or B, think right. negative, think positive, think positive. Oh, okay, right. check. He's right. literally telling you how to do it. And, you know, it's possible to control your thought life. Absolutely. You know, the Bible talks about bringing all your thoughts captive into Christ, the obedience of Christ. In other words, just what you're saying, think on these positive yes. things. That doesn't mean negative things aren't going to happen. Mm. That doesn't mean you're not going to have problems, but you don't, you want to focus on the good or the, what's going to come out of it. Like I was telling you, God told me, you focus on what I'm going to do at the end of this. You watch me work. But he needs that positive confession. Right. He needs that positive thinking to work. Absolutely. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. That's right. Oh, I'm a dead man. Well, how, How's God going to work in that? Yeah, and you know, God wouldn't tell us the way to think if it wasn't possible. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's very possible. <laughs> you, know? you know, a friend of mine is a, uh, he visits prison. He is a pris prison ministry. He's a pastor. And, you know, he had this one guy that he was uh, ministering to. And the guy says, oh, all I ever do is think negative thoughts. I'm always negative, negative. I'm always thinking negative. And, and he said, you don't have to do that. Oh, yes, I can't help myself. Oh, he says, you don't have to do that. You don't have to think that way. He says, no, that's the way I think. can't help myself. He said, well, let me ask you this. He said, if I gave you $1,000 and a get-out-of-jail-free card so you could get out of here, and all you have to do is think positive for 20 minutes, can you do that? He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> Now think about how stupid that is. And he says, well, then you can control your thoughts. That's it's just right. that you're not getting the $1,000 and you're not getting out, but you can control yes, your thoughts. Yes, that's right. That's exactly right. We can. But, you know, you cannot control your thoughts if you're not aware of your thoughts, because I think most of us are just plain old lazy. I think we just go throughout our day and we let anything that bombard wants to come against us to come against us. We fall right into it. We seem to be so lazy. And a lot of times it's just... You're not making yourself on purpose aware of your thoughts. And it may be a hard thing to do at first, but you can do this. Just ask the Holy Spirit for help to remind you every time a negative thought comes in that it would just hit you really hard because then you can do something about it. But if you're not aware of your thoughts, then we just kind of go through life not fixing anything. You know what I say? This is what I say to people. Do not let your mind run wild. Yeah, and it can. And it will. It can. It'll just go all over the place. Don't let your mind run wild. You bring that under control. And when you start thinking that negative, think nope. And one of the things we yeah. talked about is making an affirmation. Mm -hmm. I will think positive today. That Very is good. what I'm going to do. I'm going to think positive. That's what I'm going to do. And at least try to keep that going as long as you can. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, when I first started speaking positive words, when the Lord showed me, you can't talk like that. And my whole life had to change. And so if you've got a negative thought life, that whole thing has to change. Yes. It ha it's the only way you're going to stay healthy. Right. You have to have that good thought life to stay healthy. But anyway, as you, if you go to change that, you're going to make mistakes. Yeah. You're, you know, when I started, I would speak positive like for two minutes and then I'd screw it up. And then I go, oh, no, instead of saying, oh, I can never do this. I can't do it. I just said, oh, we're going to start over, Lord. Absolutely. And I started over with the right speech life and changing my speech. Over time, by making the right affirmations, I, my, my speech life is much, much better. And I never let the devil know what I'm thinking. 
Right. You know, don't don't let the devil know you. <laughs> don't let him see you sweat. Yeah. I don't let the devil know what I'm thinking. If I've got these fear, something that could happen, mm-hmm. I don't start voicing that. That's exactly right, because that's the only way he'll know. That's the only way he'll know. He, he's right. not in you. The devil never knows what you're thinking. He can't. He can okay. see what you do, and he can listen to what you say, and he can determine what you're doing from that. But I never let the devil know what I'm thinking. Yeah. Well, you need to renew your mind to the Word of God, and you need to get scriptures or positive affirmations, and you need to speak them out in order to retrain your thinking. It's going to take some work. It's going to be uh, an on-purpose decision if you just want to come out of this, and you can, and you know God's always ready to show us right away that this works, okay, because His Word does work. But I want to um, offer you confession cards that, Alan, I mean, this fits right into our teaching Uh, We took a few topics and we put positive confessions under it that, of course, is based on Scripture. Uh, Like, I have been forgiven and cleansed from all unrighteousness. So whenever you feel uh, uh, guilty or condemned, you can say that out loud and just replace it with that kind of of a thought. I treat my Christian brothers and sisters with love. I forgive anyone who has wronged me. So if you're offended in any way, you you speak that out loud. These are affirmations. Absolutely. This is a really great card to have. And along with it, we made a magnet for your refrigerator so that it would remind you to do these confessions. These are simple statements. But because we were made for the positive and for love, then they will work when they are spoken out and it will be easy for you to speak out. Do it with faith. And you get a free copy of this every time you purchase a book. And it, and the book I want to show you today is No More Regret, No More Fear. And this particular topic is in this book. And if you purchase this book, you will get a free confession card and magnet. So please go to victorylifeministries.org and get your copy today. It's really exciting to do that. You know, that. like what, are we, what we're talking about is renewing your mind. Yeah. You know, a friend of mine who came from a foreign country, lives in America now, he said, what's with the Americans? He said, you're the most negative people I have ever seen, and you guys have way more than we ever dreamed of having, yet you guys are nothing but complainers. I think a a lot of it is the television is shaping the minds of people, and it's all negative, what's going out there all the time. Yes. So don't let the devil rent space in your mind. Don't let him. It's going to happen. Mm-hmm. You're not going to stop it from initially hitting, but when it does, you need to replace, replace it, it with a good thought. You can't just remove it. Like you hear on the radio, oh, it's flu season. Right away, I say, I will never get the flu. I do not have the flu. I will never get the flu. I mean, it's stuff like that. You, and it might be an ongoing thing. You might have to do this every minute of the day until you get your, you know, and before you know it, Al, you'll just feel more, be- you'll be better. You'll feel and better. You'll get better at it. Right, You'll, right. Over time, right. because I remember, I, I probably said it here once before, I was preaching in a church, and I came oh, in, and yes. there was like nobody there. Yes. And I said to one of the guys, I said, well, where is everybody? He goes, <gasps> you don't know? Like, no. And he says, don't you know the flu is going around? And he said, and you're going to get it. And I went like this, no, <laughs> you're going to get the flu. I will never get the yes. flu. Right from the get-go, I wasn't going to let you. that mo- that thought come into my mind. That's right. And you know why I never got the flu? That's right. Everybody else was out. That's right. I mean, you can have the flu if you want it. You can have it if you want. <laughs> but he does. He gives us the answer. He doesn't only show us the problem. Like when that emotion arises and you know you've got this fear, God's got the answer. Yeah. It's so awesome. You know, the, the, the what-ifs, it's just the... It, the devil's bombarding us with the what if, what ifs. What, what if this happens? What if that happens? Yeah. What if this? What if that? Do you ever have to like mail a, a letter, an important letter, and I'm going, what if the mail loses it? What if the post office loses that letter? It was so hey, the fact that they haven't lost a letter in ten years doesn't seem to bother there was, me. There was one time uh, we had to mail something really important, and and you gave it to me, and and I left because I was going shopping and I was going to mail it, and I didn't know I didn't know how important it was, and I don't know if it was three or four times you called me <laughs> to make sure I would get it to that because that was really I mean I don't think you were afraid, but you wanted to make sure it didn't get 
tossed under the car because I was going to do some shopping first. Well, there was a check in yeah, for was, a lot right. of money. Yes. So right away yes. I'm upset. Yes. And I wanted to make sure it went where it was supposed so to So then go. I said, would you like me to bring it home and you can mail it? <laughs> sure, anytime. But anyway, what we did was we came up with a solution as to what to do. We didn't want to, you know, you don't want to be stupid about things either, but you don't want it to, to get, you know, keep you in dread and fear like, oh my gosh, are they ever going to get it? And we've done it again recently. We mailed something very important and, and we were going to put it right before the mailman came to pick it up. We were going to put it in the mailbox and I, we get to the mailbox and it was a holiday and there was no mail. And <laughs> there no mail I paper. called you. I said, do you want me to mail this? But it's not really fear. It was just making sure we well, did you know, things. Well, you there you go. The people, they <laughs> fear, I was watching the news and they said people are pulling mail out of the mailbox when it's too full. Yes, yeah, sometimes. And, and they're opening to see what's in there. Oh, what's wow. going to be in there? You know what I mean? A check to somebody, what are you going to do with that? Well, but it was this whole fear thing. Yeah. In fact, they've changed the mailboxes now where you can't do that. Oh, well, that's interesting. Well, let's go over just a couple of scriptures here before we close. But this is how you can replace those bad thoughts. Uh, if you feel unworthy, you can say this, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You know, the scripture tells us to convince yourself of that. That's right. You know, because you're going to have to. You have to convince yourself that you are the righteousness of God and that you are made right with Him whether you sin today or not. I mean, isn't that great news? He doesn't hold our sins against us. But if you don't remind yourself you of it. You were made righteous by what Jesus did. Absolutely. So you know the devil's going to come and say, oh, Absolutely. Oh, do you know what you did today? And you go, yeah, Oh, yeah. 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 You know, the best thing to do is say, yeah, I know, but guess I know. what? <laughs> you know what I do? I say, you know what, Satan? Yes, I know what I did, and I'm forgiven, and you're not. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. How about God loves me, favors me, and is forever concerned about me? That's in Jeremiah. You know, how about the economy may not look good, but wealth and riches will be in my house. Amen. And that is in Psalm 112. I love that Psalm. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. That's in 2 Timothy. The Lord is my refuge and my fortress. I will trust in Him. That's in Psalm 91. And we could go on and on and on of just wonderful scriptures. The Lord gives His angels charge over me and they mm -hmm. keep me in all my ways. It's just so awesome. So replace all that fear and those fearful emotions with a positive word from the Word of God, which is powerful and sharper than every two-edged sword could be. So thank you for joining us today. We hope we helped you and and remember, victory is yours through Jesus Christ. God wants you to prosper financially. It is His will for you to live in financial freedom. The truth is, this is one of the reasons Jesus died on the cross 2,000 years ago. Not only can you be free from sickness, disease, fear, worry, or any hold the devil may have on you, you can also have a life of financial prosperity. In my book, Walking by Faith into Prosperity, you will discover the reasons why God wants you to prosper. This book will not only teach you how to prosper God's way, but it will also cover areas in your life that may be blocking these blessings from coming your way. In Psalm 35, it says, the Lord takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. It brings great pleasure to God when his children prosper. Check out this resource on VictoryLifeMinistries.org. And we hope and pray that God blesses your life. We can't wait to see you next time on Victory Life Today.